Let me read to you a passage from the 17th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 11 to 19. It's the Gospel for Wednesday of the 32nd week of Ordinary Time. St. Luke writes, As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he travelled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realising he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none come but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. That's from Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. We are led to think of mercy. What do I mean? Well, in his great account of the history of his religious convictions, his Apologia Pro Vita Sua of 1864, Cardinal Newman speaks with deep pathos of the fact of evil and suffering in the world. He is profoundly struck with its scale, and were it not for other reasons that convince him beyond doubt of the being of God, the evil in the world would take him, he writes, into agnosticism. For this reason, it is not difficult to put one's finger on at least one fundamental source and prompt for the religious sense in mankind. It is his need for help and salvation in one sense or another. There are so many threatening forces in the life of man that he instinctively cries out for the assistance of the higher powers that he is sure are at hand and which he has been taught are indeed powerful. He asks that the powers above have pity on him. This prayer is instinctive, heartfelt, and ever recurrent. Have pity on us, is the cry of man as he gazes on the heavens from the midst of his hunger, his sickness, his loneliness, and his plight, caused by so many hostile factors. It is a further question as to whether his unaided conception and image of that to which he is appealing has objective validity, but there can be no doubt as to man's need of God and his aid. Man knows he needs to be saved, however he might visualise this salvation, and, and however he might imagine the source of this salvation. Our Gospel today presents us with ten lepers, whom we might take as a symbol of man afflicted with the various sufferings that prompt him to appeal to the above for mercy. If we were to search for a key to the understanding of human history, this image of the ten lepers crying out, have pity on us, surely expresses at least one of those keys. We all need the mercy of God. Now all too often we are blind as to sin, while it is true that man can know quite well that he is a sinner to the core of his fallen nature, nevertheless he is prone to be blind to his sinfulness and alive only to his material, emotional and intellectual misery. The same Cardinal Newman to whom I referred stated in many of his sermons that we do not need the revelation of God to appreciate that we are sinners in need of his salvation. This is true because of our sinful because our sinfulness is an evident fact of experience. <clears throat> However, in practice, it is a little like the knowledge of the one true God. Theoretically, we have the wherewithal to arrive at a knowledge of one of the one creator of the world, but due to the fallen condition of man, the vast majority of us would scarcely come to know him by our unaided efforts. We would drift into or be led into polytheism or some other deformed religious system or agnosticism 
or practical atheism. So too with the knowledge of our sinfulness and our need for salvation from sin. At least in our modern secular age, we tend to lack the sense of sin. It is one of the distinctive features of revealed religion, that it is revealed to man that he is a sinner, and that the forgiveness of sin is brought to him by and in Christ. The lepers of our gospel passage today appealed to Christ for mercy, and they were, of course, thinking of their terrible leprosy. God encourages man to appeal to him for mercy on any number of fronts. Mercy in respect to his sicknesses, his hunger, his state of political or social or economic oppression, whatever it might be. That is, we need God for our daily material bread. But Christ's miracles of healing the sick, such as our ten lepers, raising the dead and feeding the hungry crowds, were, as St. John expresses it in his Gospel, signs. They were signs of a much more important liberation, the liberation from sin. God sent his Son to save the world from sin and to reconcile all to himself through the gift of the Holy Spirit and his grace. Christ is the Redeemer of the world, especially in respect to sin, of which the leprosy in our passage today is an image. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The prayer of the lepers ought be our daily prayer, especially in respect to the leprosy of sin. Sin is our fundamental plight, our basic illness, the root cause of corruption. The Church has long taken the prayer of the ten lepers, have mercy on us, and used that prayer at the beginning of the Mass, to express our consciousness of sin and need for God's pardon. Three times, all together we state, Lord have mercy. We together, like the ten lepers, crying out together, ask for pardon and restoration to grace. We appeal to Christ for the gift of being redeemed and sanctified. Let us make the prayer of the lepers our lifelong prayer.